I took this photograph in Biloxi, Mississippi in May of 2006, nearly nine months after Hurricane Katrina devastated the northern Gulf Coast. Hurricane Katrina came ashore on August 29th, and this date is no surprise. On the Biloxi page in the Hurricane City database, you'll notice that the height of the hurricane season for any location is between September 7th and September 13th. However, for Biloxi, Mississippi, you'll notice the red shaded box is for August 31st through September 6th, very close to the date that Hurricane Katrina made landfall. Before I get to some of the amazing statistics in the Hurricane City database, let me tell you a little bit more about myself. My name is Jim Williams. I've been tracking hurricanes since the mid-1970s. I've spent countless, and I mean countless, hours in libraries going over microfilms, I've been down at the National Hurricane Center Library. I've had forecasters that have helped me tweak this database. I've also been in and near the core of eight hurricanes, starting with David in 1979, then Hurricane Andrew, Hurricane George, Irene, Francis, Jean, Katrina, and Wilma. Dad, what's the matter with I've you? also been in or near 15 tropical storms over the years. But I take the most pride in the Hurricane City database, so let's get right to it. So we've chosen Miami in the city database, and if you notice at the top, the red shaded box shows that Miami gets hit directly by hurricanes after the height of the hurricane season, between September 21st and the 27th. Now you might ask, what cities get hit the earliest in the hurricane season, and what cities get hit the latest? Well, let's find out. The most likely spot in the basin to be hit by a hurricane early in the season would be between Corpus Christi and Galveston, Texas, and the average date would be right around August 10th through the 16th. Meanwhile, in the other extreme, the central Nicaraguan coastline tends to get hit the latest in the basin. But keep in mind, these are just averages and you can always get hit later or earlier in any of these locations. Here are all 153 locations in the database on top of the graphic, and as you can see, the majority of these locations get hit by hurricanes right around the height of the hurricane season. Cape Hatteras continues to be the most affected area in the Atlantic Basin by all named storms. The least affected area by named storms is the central Nicaraguan coastline. In fact, this area gets less named storms on average than most locations do by just hurricanes alone. Tropical systems in the Atlantic started getting names back in 1950. By 1979, men's names were added to the list. But how many cities have been hit by the same name twice? Cape Hatteras is the king of repeats, with Abel, Dennis, and Irene all hitting twice. The World Meteorological Organization creates the names for hurricanes in the Atlantic Basin, which get used once every six years. Since 1950, there have been 77 names retired from the list. And the area that gets the most of those retired names is Moorhead City, North Carolina. Now, this does not mean that they were major when they moved through Moorhead City. It just means that sometime along their journey, they passed through this city. 15 of them. This next category, the tropical storm to hurricane ratio, is really interesting because most areas in the Atlantic Basin get hit by far more tropical storms than they do hurricanes, but there are a few exceptions. Here we are again back down in Nicaragua. Even though this area hardly ever gets hit by named storms, when they do get hit, 66% of the time it's a hurricane. A close runner-up for percentage of storms being hurricanes goes to Key West. The lowest percentage of storms that come in at hurricane strength goes to St. Pierre, Newfoundland, with only 20% at hurricane strength, and this includes extra tropical systems. So, have you ever wondered who gets the most majors in the Atlantic Basin? Well, that title goes to Key Largo, Florida. Notice the bar graph at the bottom of the screen. 28.85% of all storms are major. Close runners up to this area are the Northwest Bahamas and the very southern tip of Florida. Not only does Key Largo have the highest percentage of major hurricane hits, but it also has one of the longest periods of time in U.S. history where a system did not pass over Key Largo 20 years between 1966 and 1987. Now in 1981, Tropical Storm Dennis passed over 40 miles to the west with a very tiny wind field, so that was not counted. So we have 20 years, but that is not the highest in the Atlantic Basin. 
That distinction goes to Prince of Polka, Nicaragua, the central coast of Nicaragua, went 42 years without a named storm between 1953 and 1996. The record gap for the United States goes to Richmond, Virginia, 24 years between 1971 and 1996. Now here we are back at the Miami page in the database, and we're down to the category of average years between direct hurricane hits. Miami's had 31 hurricanes pass directly over the city. That's about once every 4.58 years, which is more than what a lot of cities get for all named storms. So it's got one of the highest return rates for hurricanes in the Atlantic Basin, but it's not the highest. The shortest gap for hurricane hits in the Atlantic Basin goes to Great Abaco Island, Bahamas. Every 3.64 years, a hurricane core comes right over that island. The Northwest Bahamas, followed by Cape Hatteras, and most of South Florida have the most hurricane impacts in the Atlantic Basin. This next stat is probably my favorite in the database, and that is the average mile per hour of hurricane hits based on advisories only. So Miami's comes out to 110 miles per hour. Simple mathematical formula, basically taking all of the hurricane advisories landfalls of Miami and dividing it by the number of hurricanes that have made direct hits and that gives you your average miles per hour. And the high wind capital of the Atlantic Basin goes to Gulfport, Mississippi with a whopping 121.36 mile per hour average wind of all hurricanes that have struck that city since 1871. Close runner up are the Northwest Bahamas, 115 to 120 miles per hour. I took this photo in the aftermath of Hurricane Katrina here in South Florida in 2005. This photograph, along with many others and the statistics that you just saw, can be found at hurricanecity.com slash cities. Or you can simply go to Google and type in the name of your city followed by the word hurricane and you'll probably find your city database page. Each year after the hurricane season ends, all 153 cities in the Hurricane City database are recalculated to figure out who gets affected most by named storms and ranked on a ranking page. The number one city in the Atlantic Basin continues to be Cape Hatteras, North Carolina. Of course, they get affected by a lot of extra tropical storms as they're moving up the coast late in the season. But every city along the coast in North Carolina has cracked the top 50. None of the cities in Texas cracked the top 50 this year. Check it out, hurricanecity.com slash rank and hurricanecity.com slash cities. Thank you for watching.